poor countries around the globe. It helps the poor countries around the globe because it redistributes the wealth globally. Remember, remember, think of it this way. Things are unsustainable. Redistribution of wealth is the key, and we have to create a new global government. Got it? I want to show you the world's wealth. Where is the world's wealth? I want to compare some countries. The national average income in Brazil is $8,135. Venezuela, it's $11,000. India, $1,000. China, $3,000. You compare that with the United States, we are greedy gluttons. If you're trying to balance the globe, you're going to push all these guys up or you're going to push this one down? You've got to do a little of both. Now, for all the people here in America that have lashed out at the wealthiest 1% and blame them for all of America's problems, guess what? the rest of the world to, compared to the average citizen in Mexico or Mozambique you are the wealthiest one percent you could be the lowest person on the ladder here and you are still wealthier than anybody in India you have cars, you have cable, we have cell phones, designer clothes well almost a billion people around the globe live on one dollar per day my point is get ready to practice what you preach except you are the one who's going to pony up this time it is your wealth that is going to be redistributed around the globe to lift up other countries it is a red herring to talk about the rich here in america because the money is not going to the poor here in america tons of money is going overseas in fact in fact, since we have the most to lose, our standard of living is going to go down. I played you a clip of John Holdren, the science czar, yesterday. How he wants to de-develop the United States. Well, this is what he's talking about. But I want to play that clip for you again. Watch it again. I want to just ask you, you wrote a massive campaign must be launched to restore high-quality environment in North America and to de-develop the United States in your book, Human Ecology. Could you explain what you meant by de-develop the United States? You guys, what we meant by that was stopping the kinds of activities that are destroying the environment and replacing them with activities that would produce both prosperity and environmental equality. Thanks a lot. And, and how do you plan on implementing that? Through the free market economy. Okay. Danger to the planet. Environmental equality is what he said. Remember, we're hurting the rainforest. So send the money to Brazil where the rainforest is to promote environmental equality. You notice that? He mentioned the free market. But remember, Holdren's goal is global wealth redistribution. It's important that we have a global agreement on how we are going to limit the emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases going forward and an agreement that will include the tropical forests that will include ways to transfer some of the revenues from carbon taxes or carbon emission permits in the north to pay for reduced deforestation in the south now, how do you do that in the free market well, the free market works on supply and demand. So the government attempts to create demand by regulating, let's say, oh, I don't know, oil. Regulate oil. Force America to buy it overseas at poorer countries. They're doing it with the auto industry. Let's say you have to say you're starting to make electric cars. We must make electric cars. Well, they're expensive to make. Do you think you can make them cheaper here in America or in China? We create the demand. They supply it. We send their money. They send the car. It's global redistribution of wealth. How about solar panels? We keep hearing about solar panels and green jobs. Who can make them cheaper, us or China? China is way ahead in this. We create the demand, they supply it. It's brilliant. Now, another way, again, is with the oil. Is with the oil. I just showed you our oil situation. The government ties our hands and makes it expensive, difficult, even impossible to drill for oil through regulation and bans. So guess what? We have to go buy it from Venezuela, Brazil, or Mexico. We can't make things cheap like they can. We can't drill the oil because of our government. So we send our money to them. Why do you think the Saudis are so rich? They were people in the sand on camels. Oil. How did they get rich? We sent them our money. It is redistribution of wealth. That is the motivating factor behind cap and trade. Not saving the planet, but what did he say? Ecological uh, equity. 
redistributing the wealth. Big rich companies will be polluting just the same, but paying poor countries to do it. It's about shipping our wealth overseas. I want to show you a staggering map. This is what carbon credits will cost each state. The darker the green here, the more money each state has to send, not to the federal government in Washington, but overseas. In Texas, it's over $1.5 billion money going overseas. There's no job creation. We no longer will have the capital to create and lift ourselves out of trouble. Nobody in Washington is attempting to get us out of uh, uh, these problems with free market solutions. They're not doing that. They're trying to de-develop us and put us on par with the rest of the world. Why? Because we're moving towards, towards global governance. Look, this is not a conspiracy theory. It's not even, if that's what you believe, this is my problem with the administration. Say what you mean and mean what you say. But they don't. I guarantee you, if Media Matters and George Soros isn't on it yet, they will be in the next 10 minutes saying what a conspiracy theorist I am. That's what they do. But in their own words, this is what they believe. It's just two ways of approaching things. That's it. The question is, do you believe in freedom anymore? Do you believe in the free market system and entrepreneurs? Do you believe in the founding documents? We got problems. We've made mistakes. Can we take the best of what we have and jettison the worst and try again?